Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Green Flag. I'm your host, Lucas Wacker. With me, as always, we have Kyle Cushman. And in today's episode, we've got a preview the Nashville weekend for the NASCAR Cup Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Camping World Truck Series as Nashville makes its return to the NASCAR calendar for the first time in almost a decade. It's been a very, very long time since NASCAR visited the Music City in um in Tennessee there for on track action. Uh, the truck and Xfinity series was lost, I believe in 2012. So it's been quite some time since we've seen some cars on track at Nashville super speedway, but that is exactly what we're going to be seeing this weekend here as NBC kicks off their stint for the NASCAR coverage as well for the Xfinity series and the truck series. So uh, we're wishing them all the best in their kind of uh, stint to the championship finale in Phoenix in many, many months time, but uh, some exciting news to get to in today's episode. And of course our fantasy preview a little bit later on, but before we get into all of that, how are you doing today, Kyle? Yeah, I'm excited for this one. We got a new track. We got, practice qualifying we got all three series even looking outside of nascar as well it's a really fun weekend of motorsports so uh doing good i'm a little under the weather so i apologize if my voice is a little annoying or anything like that or if i or if the energy level starts to die off as the show goes on but looking forward to this upcoming weekend back in nashville the first time in what 10 years basically yeah what a trooper you are though kyle coming on the show <laughs> do, and everything do not, no uh, it'll do not and play all. it up no I, <laughs> It is like a barely a sniffle and like a slight cough. So uh, we're do we're doing all right in, in the grand scheme of things. All right, all righty. Let's jump into the news because we have actually a little bit to get into in today's episode. And yeah. of course, it kind of spoils a little bit of our silly season predictions to an extent in terms of the charters <laughs> that were uh, kind of distributed with this piece of news. As we all knew, College Racing was going to be joining the NASCAR Cup Series in 2022. It was just a matter of would it be chartered? Would it not be chartered? Where would they get this charter from? And we finally have confirmation on that news today before we recorded today's episode as they have purchased two charters from Spire Motorsports, leaving them with only one, that being Spire for Corey LaJoy's entry in 2022. Most likely that he re-ups with the team there um, and stays in the seven car. But now Colleague has two charters now and they're going one car full time in 2022 with Justin Haley. So Kyle gets one for one on the silly season side of things <laughs> with his predictions. I am off to a zero for one start as per usual. So it's not been great out of the gate, but we still have lots of time to get to with silly season. And they're also going to be doing a part-time car with AJ Allmendinger, which will not be chartered. So uh, that makes a lot of sense in terms of colleagues kind of um, aspirations for the cup series. They basically have become a little bit of the new uh, uh, aspire in a sense. That was kind of the vibe that we, that we're kind of getting here. Justin Haley drove for Spire for many, many uh, races in a, a kind of a part-time schedule with the team to get some Cup Series experience. Now, Colleague is bringing him back for the Cup Series side of things and uh, putting him in there full-time. And A.J. Allmendinger will continue his his full-time Xfinity Series schedule in 2022. So lots of news there on Colleague Racing's front. And what do you make of the news here, Kyle? Spire going down to only one charter car next season and then Colleague adding a second one that could potentially be on the move elsewhere for another team to get. Yeah, so just to begin, it's been confirmed that Colleague will be using both charters. Uh, and so the first charter is going to be the normal 16. It's going to be used by Justin Haley full-time. The second charter will be split between AJ Allmendinger and somebody else. So it's going to be really? uh, similar to what like Spire has done with like the 77, where it's been a rotation of drivers. It could be AJ and one other person. It could be multiple other drivers. So that's kind of where things are at right now uh, going into next season. So Haley will be playoff eligible. That second car won't be, uh, but will still be uh, eligible for owner points and everything like that. So a bit of a unique situation. It's not too often we see a competitive car, which we expect Colleague to be from what we've seen the, so far this season from them on both the super speedways and the road courses, we expect them to be at least somewhat competitive. And so it's not too often we see one of those cars have a rotation of drivers. So that should be something interesting to watch next year. But for I'll, I'll begin on the colleague side makes a ton of sense. Uh, we already knew that they were going up to the cup series. Justin Haley has been a driver that they've been developing alongside for now three years. I believe it is since he came up from GMS in the truck series He's been continuously progressing each year, uh, and I think it makes a ton of sense. He's been getting Cup Series experience this year, running at the back of the pack with Spire in that 77 for basically every race weekend that he can. Um, and I think that he's a great driver for colleague to bring to the Cup Series, have run full time, and be that kind of guy that they can, again, in the Cup Series now, grow alongside. I think he's a really solid prospect. 
He has sponsorship as well, which is a big aspect here. So uh, it's a move that makes a lot of sense for both sides. On the Spire side of things, um, basically you knew that LaJoy and the Seven was kind of like their main focus and they had kind of other charters from just kind of circumstance that they were able to acquire them, less so of them wanting to actually use them. They've kind of run the last couple of years doing so. Um, but with a partner like Colleague that they've worked closely with, of course, with Justin Haley and all those kind of different ties, makes a lot of sense for them to sell to that team, still have those ties between the two. Um, I am surprised that it was both that they sold. I figured that they would sell one, maybe keep two, maybe use both, maybe loan the other, something along those lines. I am a little bit surprised that they sold both. Um, but for Spire, it makes a lot of sense. They can now solely focus on that number seven. LaJoy is already under a multi-year contract, so they don't need to worry about that. Solid driver for them, uh, who's really helped that team kind of take that slight step up uh, to com be competitive with kind of that second front row car this year. Once Next Gen comes in, that's when their plan really starts to come to fruition for Spire. Um, and for Colleague, uh, Haley makes a lot of sense. AJ Allmendinger as well. I didn't think that he would go full-time cup racing. So it makes sense to keep him Xfinity full-time and then have him basically do the races that he wants to in the cup series, who he's partnered with, I think is a more interesting question for that car. They talked about Kaz Grala in the press conference, how they want to keep him in the fold and it's mainly sponsorship, uh, sponsorship stuff that they're working with to see where he kind of ends up with the team. So interested to see what happens with the rest of that second colleague ride, but overall it makes a lot of sense for both parties involved. Yeah. I mean, you can tell Haley's kind of been the, the relationship guy to bridge that with colleague for a while here. And um, that relationship continues on in 2022. So I'm just happy that colleague is, you know, showing that they're very interested in the, in the cup series. They're willing to put the effort in, you know, Spire did say last season, yeah, we're fully invested in the sport. And I think they have done that with the seven car, but to take this kind of step back is a little bit interesting. I wasn't expecting them to sell both um, just write out sell instead of just maybe keeping one for a lease loan one for to a team for a year, hopefully something else comes up but uh that was not the case this time around and uh apologies for getting the information wrong i have had a busy morning and uh <laughs> i have not quite had the uh the time to it's really good. Some look of into it, was it but a bit murky it, as well it kind of came out in pieces over the entire press conference as well so it's all good no worries. Uh, so yeah, a very congr congratulations though to Justin Hilly for securing a cup series ride. Well, the Zerv has done very well in the Xfinity yep. series, yep. made the championship four last season, of course, for colleagues. So the, the signs are there that he could be ready for a cup series ride. And uh, to be that kind of flagship guy, the team, that, the, a guy that they're going to build the team around is very, very cool to see for Justin Hilly and, you know, Matt Colligan and everybody uh, from Chris Rice at that team have done a fantastic job uh, yep. in their steps, in their strides of slowly moving up the Xfinity Series pack to where they are a legit championship threat this season with AJ Allmendinger, Justin Haley, and even Jeb Burton, if you want to consider those two in there as well. They've got a lot of right things going on, and I'm really happy that AJ Allmendinger is really – deciding what his future should look like in motorsports. He's deciding, you know, probably the pressure in the cup series is a little bit too much for him. He has invested some money, it seems in the team as well. So uh, he's, he's with that Matt colleague kind of stable over there for the long haul, it seems. And that's great to see that he's really found a fit in a home that he feels comfortable with. And he's just willing to do the Xfinity series stuff. And it's great to see that we're going to have a competitive guy there down there again, next season in 2022. So lots of exciting things in store for colleague racing in 2022 and for the remainder of 2021 as they go for a championship bid in the Xfinity series. So do you have anything else you want to add on the, uh, the story here, Kyle? I think the last little bit is kind of the fallout from the Spire side of things. And that's what it means for now track house, because of course Spire has three charters this season. They're selling two of them and they're keeping one themselves, which means that there's no Spire charter to loan to track house now. And it seems like Justin Marks was kind of caught off guard at least a little bit based off of what he tweeted earlier today, kind of saying like he found out about this deal the same time everybody else did when it was announced today. So interested to see what happens now for track house. We heard last week um, that they were looking to actually expand. I don't yeah. know if the charter situation now impacts that if they're still going full steam ahead and looking to that second car, regardless as to whether they have two charters, one charter, no charters. Um, so I think that's something to watch here as well. Um, Spire selling two is one that I don't think we were expecting, but they're still 
a handful of charters that could potentially be sold. Rick Ware Racing has four charters. They could potentially look to sell one or two of those. One of those could actually be rescinded by NASCAR by finishing for the third yeah. season in a row in the bottom three. That Petty Ware number 51 is currently third last in, in the Cup Series in order points. Um, if they rescind that, there's a bunch of stuff that could go around. They could also just sell it outright there. There's the yeah. JTG rumors. Of course, they only have one charter right now, but they could look to sell. Um, so there are still some other charters to go around for the 2311s, track house, anybody else that could be looking to acquire one. But I think now that the colleague domino has fallen, I think now we can start to see where some of the other pieces start to fall in terms of new seats that come around, uh, whether teams decide to expand, stay as, buy a charter, loan charters, a bunch of other stuff can now go into kind of place. Now that kind of the main one of colleague who we knew were going to be the most aggressive to kind of get things in place for next year. Those plans have now been settled. This charter stuff is so stressful, man. It's so hard to keep track of sometimes <laughs> like, you know, I just wish it was just a straight 43 car field and we didn't have to worry about this stupid stuff anymore. But we're in a world where this is uh, where money talks and uh, charters are very valuable to these teams. So um, I, I can't really go against the the kind of methodology that they've kind of gone down here. But at the same time, it is very confusing if you're just trying to get into the sport for an average fan to really understand the depths and why this team cannot expand and why this team can expand and yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, college racing got through all of this mayhem with the charter system and they have established themselves and have got their uh, 2022 plans done nice and early. So they can really start to focus on that next season with the next gen car. So uh, looking forward to seeing how they do and how the rest of these charters are charters are going to be distributed because we know there's teams teams that look are looking to expand and some some of them that may be looking to kind of fold in an ex to an extent as well. So lots of different storylines here. So we'll keep you covered on that front with the charters and who's moving, who's not and everything like that. But uh, exciting stuff for colleague racing and for Spire Motorsports. We'll see what they do with their future plans beyond 2022. If they decide to go back to a two car stable with the charter, or if they decide to uh, kind of stick with one with Corey LaJoy or somebody else long-term, but we'll move on to 2022 news. Once again, here, Kyle, Alex Bowman has signed his contract extension. Uh, no real surprise here. It was just a matter of putting pen to paper. And he has signed a contract extension with Hendrick Motorsports to keep him with the team until the end of the 2023 season. So uh, a nice chunk of time here for Alex Bowman to stay in that 48 car for Hendrick Motorsports. Well-deserved two wins on the season so far. His first multi-win season in the NASCAR Cup Series as well. So he's done very well. And we're, not, we're just about the halfway point of this season as well. So exciting thing for Alex Bowman right now and uh, well-deserved nonetheless for uh, the, the driver of the Ally 48. Yeah, it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And uh, we heard it when Bowman has won two races and Rick Hendrick basically say that an extension is a formality. It's just basically putting the pen to paper. So all of it just makes a lot of sense. You look at Bowman's issue over the last couple of years has kind of been the sponsorship side of things for Hendrick Motorsports. And he's got the full sponsorship now of Ally. So that's not even a concern anymore. It just makes a lot of sense. And when you look at the future, that's a couple of big extensions coming up in the next couple of years for Chase Elliott and William Byron. Alex Bowman is kind of more that mid-tier driver in terms of the paycheck that he would be getting. Um, he's got the high-end ability to win races, to be competitive in the playoffs like we saw last year. Um, so it just makes a lot of sense to re-sign him for a couple of seasons here, keep him in the fold, not make any changes when things are going as well as they are, kind of reevaluate maybe where the team is at in a couple of seasons once you're uh, a couple of years into next gen, uh, see where the team's at, see what free agents are available. You've got Chevy prospects like Sam Mayer coming down the fold, so that's kind of when they would be looking to get to the Cup Series. So you can kind of reevaluate things at that point, but for right now, there's just no reason to move on from Alex Bowman. Any other bring, uh, driver you'd be bringing in would be one that's more expensive. You'd be if you're talking about it like a Brad Keselowski or somebody like that. No reason to change it up. So Alex Bowman re-signing at Hendrick. It was a matter of when, uh, and it happened to be today. So excited for him to kind of get that. Uh, done already, not have to worry about that the rest of the season. Have that full-time sponsorship of Ally and really look ahead now with a couple wins under his belt to the playoffs and see what that 48 team can do. 
Yeah, I mean, they argue, arguably have the best lineup in, in the Cup Series right now with how they perform so far this season. So it uh, makes a lot of sense for Hendrick Motorsports to keep that stable together for as long as they can here. And Alex Bowman is a very key piece to that uh, uh, quartet there for Hendrick Motorsports. He's done a, a, a fabulous job at growing and gaining more experience over the years. We really saw him blossom in the, in the playoffs last season, and the, that success has kind of transferred into this season. Had a bit of a slow start with consistency. Now it's starting to pick up that consistency, and we're seeing the points really show with that so congratulations to alex bowman on getting that contract extension i know for any driver and specifically for bowman who's worked so hard to work his way up to the ranks yeah. went from tommy Baldwin racing and with the seven car on part-time stuff and uh, it's just been quite the road for him to get here and it's well deserved for alex bowman he's done very well with the equipment that he's what he's that he's had and dale jr gave him that big break and he's definitely taken it and run with it so congratulations to bowman once again and we stay on 2022 silly season stuff here kyle gms racing is going cup series racing in 2022 uh out of left field like this is in the secondary park next to the field you're playing on this came out of absolutely nowhere with gms racing and the starting new cup series team we get the impressions it could be we don't know anything beyond that uh cup series to some extent drivers to been scheduled to be determined so a lot of variables still up in the air but we do know gms racing is coming cup series racing in 2022 so your initial thoughts here kyle we don't know much too much beyond that but uh pretty exciting stuff that we're having some truck series uh organizations potentially looking at coming to the cup series here yeah left field is the right thing because uh, what it was two years ago now that they shut down that xfinity series team with john hunter nemechek um, and all of a sudden they're going cup racing. So it's kind of a weird kind of progression here for GMS, but next gen, get in early, see where things are at. I do think that this will be a part-time team. I doubt that they're going to be involved in kind of charter conversations. I assume this is going to be kind of slowly get into the fold. Uh, of course, next gen is going to be one car for everywhere. So it's not something that you need to worry about too much in that regard. Um, but I do think that it'll be kind of a slow progression into the cup series uh, for GMS. Um, and it, it's cool to see. I don't know what number they'll run, maybe like a 26 or something, because a lot of their numbers yeah, in the truck game. series right now are taken in the cup series. Um, but for GMS, it, it, this is a really cool opportunity. The Xfinity stuff didn't work out too, too, uh, too, too much. Um, but they're a powerhouse in the truck series. They have the financial might. Um, they, they run five trucks regularly in the truck series. Um, so moving up to cup makes a lot of sense. Maybe the trickle down effect. I'm not too sure about what that would mean for the truck series team, whether they would go down to three or four trucks or whether they would stay at five and go part-time in cup, whatever it means. Um, but this is really cool because anytime you can get new teams in the cup series and especially ones that are kind of, um, have that footprint in NASCAR already at a lower series is really cool. Um, but I think a bigger question is maybe who's going to drive for this team. And it's something that a lot of people have kind of pulled from. Some people have looked, maybe this is a way for junior motorsports to kind of get to the cup series and kind of a partnership thing. And maybe like a Justin Allgaier's candidate. I think this, this is going to be a part-time team uh not going to be full-time whoever mm -hmm. runs in this car will probably still run for points in another series so i'm looking at probably sheldon creed to be the leading candidate maybe somebody like zane smith as well depending on what they decide to do next season um you can also look to some former gms drivers as well in kaz Grala, depending on what happens there with colleague if he doesn't get a full-time ride if he doesn't share that ride with aj Almendinger in the cup series maybe he looks to something like that um previously you could have said justin haley is a potential candidate from his gms days but of course that has now been ruled out with him going full-time for colleagues so definitely quite a few ties of former gms drivers current gms drivers that could be candidates and another name there brett moffett i feel like that's unlikely just given how that relationship ended but you never know fernando alonso went back to mclaren so anything is possible in motorsports um but i think this is a fascinating one to see how, how it plays out for starters the schedule whether they're part-time whether they're full-time if they're part time what races they run and also who goes in that seat so definitely one that nobody was expecting uh but definitely a welcomed addition to the cup series going into next season 
Yeah, it's a busy week. As soon as the the the, t- the TV no schedule turns over, everybody wants to bring <laughs> on the news for NBC's opening week here. So I'm going to say we the started coverage it off. Talks our, about our silly this. season okay. video. Everybody was like, "Oh yeah, we, maybe we should start figuring that out." Which, by the way, has done fantastic on the channel. So thank you all so much for watching that video. Uh, it's got over, I think, 400 something views now. So over 500 uh, by now. our standards, that that. Yeah. that, that that really over 500. Wow. By uh, the viewership they usually get on our usual preview episodes, the fun stuff that we do like that does very, very well. Um, and, and we're just really happy you guys are liking the content. So thank you so much for all your support on that front. But we did not have GMS Racing in the Cup Series <laughs> no, predicted we didn't. In, that epi- in that episode. So uh, a lot of the things that we have predicted so far have, you know, been kind of thrown in a mishmash pile and it's coming out like garbage on the other side. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, this is what you love to see, though. This is what you love to see in motorsports yeah. that, that anything can still surprise you even when you think you you can predict everything or you think you're right to the to the greatest extent something will always come at you from left field and that's and that's always a great thing of the nice shock factor with silly season and this next gen car is really starting to spark some people's interest in trying to get some new cup series teams which uh which hopefully will make nascar rethink their charter system and everything like that for the future and how they want to do things because the more competitive teams we have in the cup series is the better for the sport. So uh, congratulations to GMS Racing on getting their plans together here to an extent. I know that they're holding some cards back and releasing some stuff to the public, but um, I'm really curious to see who they fill in that seat because there is some really interesting names in the Chevrolet camp um, that could definitely fill that part-time stuff if they end up going their route or even part of full-time with no charter. Um, it's, it, they could have somebody really interesting in that seat. Yep. So lots of different things with, with silly season colleague, GMS, Alex Bowman, all of that really, really enticing stuff, but lots that of Chevy we'll do on the NASCAR side. Yeah, that will. I mean, they have the most uh, cars, so you would expect I know, that. I know. I know. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's 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 really great to see. But I think that'll do it for the NASCAR side of things with news. But we do have some IndyCar stuff that we'll toss in in today's episode, and that's just for some driver movement for this upcoming weekend at Road America after their uh, doubleheader at Detroit this past weekend, which saw Marcus Erickson win his first IndyCar race. So congratulations to him, and then Padua Ward get his second IndyCar victory. We had some. Uh, interesting uh kind of incidents at the track and unfortunately for uh felix rosenquist that was on the end of the short end of the stick for him as his throttle stuck going into a corner and hit the tire barriers head on very nasty impact and uh thankfully he is on the mend he went to the hospital but he's not been cleared to race to uh for road america this weekend so as a result none other then Kevin Magnuson will be driving the number seven for Aero McLaren SP this weekend at Road America. Really, really cool to see him getting a shot. There was some interesting rumors in the offseason on whether uh, Kevin Magnuson may come over to IndyCar in some capacity, maybe a part-time thing or, or something like Roman Grosjean is kind of doing. But he's going, uh, he's getting one shot here and he's just dipping his feet into uh, the IndyCar car side of things potentially for uh, a deal for next season who knows but he is available doing the IMSA circuit here of course but uh, for, for Chip Ganassi racing but he's taken a little bit of time off here and going over to Aaron McLaren and see what he can do there and then as well we'll tie in here Renus VK unfortunately underwent uh, a, a outpatient surgery I believe is, is what they kind of framed it as uh, it was successful but he had to fix a broken clavicle that uh, he suffered during a f- cycling accident uh, away from the racetrack so unfortunately for Renus Vicchio who's had a fantastic start to his 2021 season he will not be racing this weekend and in steps Oliver Askew for the 21 car for Ed Carpenter racing so some interesting kind of injury front on the IndyCar side of things showing that racing is still dangerous no matter how much safety that we put into it specifically for Re- Felix Rosenquist but it's an unfortunate situation for VK but we have two guys that are stepping in here Oliver Askew who was kind of on the outside of things with the Aaron McLaren side of things. He did replace um, uh, Rosenquist in the second race uh, of the Detroit uh, Grand Prix weekend there, but he's going over to Ed Carpenter to allow Kevin Magnuson to come over to McLaren. Of course, his former F1 team back in the day as well. So uh, lots of things here with this kind of swap of drivers for this weekend. We're wishing them all the best in their recoveries for Felix Rosenquist and Renus VK. We hopeful, we're hopeful that they're behind the, f- the seat and behind the wheel of their respective cars in the very, very near future. But huge opportunity for K-Mag and uh, for Oliver Askew this weekend, Kyle. 
Yeah, um, I'll begin with uh, the Ed Carpenter racing stuff. And because that was what was announced first and the unfortunate accident with uh, Renus VK there, especially tough blow, just given how good he's been so far this season, currently fifth in the championship. That's a big blow for that team, uh, especially just given the form that he's been in. So that's a really tough one uh, for VK. Hopefully he can be back uh, very soon in that car because he's been fantastic to watch so far this season. But the thing that caught my eye was that Oliver Askew was the one announced to replace him, at least in this upcoming weekend. And I thought that was a bit strange because he was the one who replaced Felix Rosenquist just this past weekend. And I thought it for sure he wouldn't be um, Rosenquist that is uh, cleared to race by the following week. And I figured that this would probably be a couple week process, just given how big the impact was concussion protocols, that kind of stuff. It feels like it would probably be a little bit rushed to get him back in that seat. So I, I was a little bit mm -hmm. surprised by that uh, and was wondering what was happening, whether Rosenquist would be back. Maybe McLaren had some other plans and clearly they had some other plans because they get Kevin Magnuson and of, of course a, an off weekend for IMSA here. So it's not any schedule conflicts or anything like that, but it's to get him in that seat um, is awesome. Not just because his talent level, not just given the former McLaren ties between the two, um, but this is truly kind of a, a one shot in kind of the thick of things test to see, okay, just going in blind. Let's see where he is at the base level and maybe see going into next season, whether a third McLaren entry, whether he places like a Rosenquist at that team. Um, so a huge opportunity this weekend for Kevin Magnuson, as it is for Oliver Askew, of course, but yeah. really, really looking forward to this upcoming weekend because Kevin Magnuson in IndyCar, that's going to be a treat to watch, whether that's competing at the front, which is going to be a long shot, or whether it's kind of more where we would expect him to be kind of near the back of the pack, just kind of getting gripped uh, and, and getting used to these Indy cars because they're so unique in motorsports um, is going to be really fun to watch. So really looking forward to this upcoming weekend, another shot for Oliver Askew, which is great to see. Um, got kind of the short end of the stick last year, uh, had a slow start, especially compared to his teammate Pato Award. Had the injury, of course, at the Indianapolis 500 that derailed the rest of his season there. So it's good to see him get kind of a second opportunity here, first with McLaren last weekend and now going into the future here, probably uh, for one or two races, depending on how long it takes for VK to get back behind the wheel uh, for Ed Carpenter Racing. So uh, definitely going to be a fun trip to Road America coming up this weekend. Of course, last year, it was a great race between Felix Rosenquist and Pato Award. Of course, Rosenquist won't be part of that battle this time around, but we'll see who gets in the mix this time. But uh, definitely look looking forward to road america here with a couple new faces and new places this upcoming weekend yeah uh, i mean obviously we want the best for the drivers but this is an exciting element or an exciting twist to what uh, is going to be a, a yeah. really interesting weekend at road america did kevin magnuson did they already race imsa at road america this season no no, right? That That's coming up for them. So he's getting a little bit of a preliminary test, if you will, at the track. But um, I'm really curious to see how he does. That's the one I'm going to be watching more so than uh, Oliver Askew. Of course, he's done some stuff in IndyCar before with uh, Aaron McLaren last season. But for Kevin Magnuson, this is a huge opportunity. And if he can score, I don't know, what's a real realistic expectation? Like top 20, top yeah. top 15? So, top 20 it, would be it, it, kind of the, the realistic kind of... If he, if he succeeds, probably a top 20 finish will be really solid depending on if there's crashes or anything like that. If he's top 20 on pace, yeah. I think that would be uh, probably a good weekend. Just having not tested it all, going in kind of with a practice session and then qualifying and then into the race. So um, definitely don't expect him to be up there competing for the win, even though he is a former Formula One driver, even though Roman Grosjean has been really solid this season. Grosjean had the testing yeah. time at tracks that they've been to um, and so has had the ability to also progress in the season as well. Magnussen doesn't have that luxury. He's going in blind. We saw last week Oliver Askew kind of be near the back of the pack. We saw last year when Elio Castroneves, James Hinchcliffe kind of had their spot starts. They were near the back of the pack as well. So don't expect grand things for Kevin Magnussen. Top 20 is probably going to be the realistic goal for him this weekend. Do you think he beats Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> yes. 
Okay, okay. It's Kevin Magnuson gets the one up on Jimmy Johnson this weekend. Uh, and, and also while we're recording here, we have a little bit of news. Eddie DeHaunt on the NASCAR side of things, he is going to be returning to the spotter stand for Chase Elliott after his uh, misconduct and being uh, suspended by NASCAR indefinitely and by Hendrick Motorsports indefinitely. It was a very short-lived suspension, I will say that, for, for Eddie DeHaunt after his arrest. Um, I believe uh, 2019, I think it was, and they didn't, uh, he didn't allow or give notice to NASCAR or Hedrick Motorsports on it. So he's going to be back atop of the spotter stand for Chase Elliott this weekend. So um, interesting kind of news there. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to add on it, Kyle, but I just wanted to mention it. Um, It just looks like the case was dismissed for, quote, insufficient evidence to warrant prosecution. So just given the circumstances can't be proved in court, given that um, the the organization doesn't have like a a legal case to kind of base the dismissal off of, kind of have to bring him back into the fold just uh, legally. I don't know the the details of the situation, whether it was a case that was kind of made up to kind of target him or anything like that if it did happen and just you can't prosecute it not going to speculate on any of that stuff but um nice to see at the very least that the that things have been resolved there and things can kind of go back to normal for hendrick motorsports i'm not going to make any like character claims on eddie the hunt or whatever just given we don't have the details or anything like that but um kind of weird timing going into the weekend, like the the day before you're going to practice and stuff like that, figured maybe they just kind of have him announce be back and then come back the following weekend. But hey, whatever works. They want him in there. Um, they want him in there after two consecutive pl- second place finishes for Chase Elliott. Maybe they're like, yep, Eddie DeHaan is the missing piece to get Chase Elliott back into victory lane. Who knows? But um yeah, I think that'll basically do it for the news and notes. Just one final thing here. NBC and IndyCar seem to like they're closing in on a broadcasting extension deal as all other networks, it seems, have kind of bowed out uh, per report. So CBS, Fox, and ESPN seem to not be interested in taking that on full time. Obviously, the SRX series is in action this weekend as well um, at uh, Knoxville at Raceway. So that yeah. should be very interesting. Um, what oh, Just quickly here, Kyle, because we didn't really do a race recap. What were your initial impressions? Impressions of the SRX series before we get into fantasy. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was worried about just the the twelve cars and maybe um, a lack of on track uh, action, but things were kept close. There was quite a few battles. Um, I, I, obviously, there's things to kind of work out, but I think overall um, it was a, a success. And uh, to that effect, actually, because uh, Kobe is going from the local track legend to winning SRX and now getting a truck series shot in the number 24 truck with GMS at Bristol. Um, You can see kind of already the, uh, the effect that that series is having, not just the uh, TV audience and people getting to see some of these legends again, but giving an opportunity to some of these short track guys, dirt guys um, to kind of have this big spotlight event and be able to parlay it into bigger opportunities. So After one race weekend, we're already seeing the effect that SRX can have. Um, I think the first event was a success. We saw it. The TV numbers were a big success. So I'm interested to see how things go this upcoming weekend at Knoxville. That should be definitely interesting to see how it goes on dirt versus how the show was on asphalt there. Um, But uh, I think overall, the success things to work out in terms of some of the TV broadcast, um, some like the graphics and kind of um, the big thing I think is kind of distinguishing who's in what car, that kind of stuff. But we've already seen them kind of adjust, put the names on the side of the car in bigger font, stuff like that. So um, growing pains to work out, but I think overall first weekend was a big success. Yeah. For me, I, I, I agree with you on everything you said there. I think, um, th- I think their willingness to, to change and, and adapt on a, such a quick turnaround like this one weekend and boom, they're willing to change some stuff after hearing some viewership feedback. They want this to be as successful as possible for the fans and, um, and, and for the viewership numbers to show that they really care about this. And they made some changes going from 15 minute heats down to 12 minutes. And that's going to continue on for the remainder of the season, mm-hmm. which I think was a really good uh, choice on their part. Cause 15 minutes did seem like a little bit too long and they did go past their broadcasting 
window for their inaugural weekend. So uh, they want to try and limit that a little bit. 50 lap feature race. So uh, that kind of changes based off of the, um, the, the track that you go to, of course. But um, and, and like you said, they're changing the, the look of the cars a little bit, making the driver names a bit bigger. And uh, the, the still the invert and then the heat races and yeah. all that stuff is still going to be um, basically the same as what it was last weekend. So um, they've, they've really found something here. It was good, aggressive racing. There were some hits and spins. It wasn't, um, you know, like amateur driving. These guys are true professionals and they, they showed up to race and it was really interesting to see Greg Biffle with the, the backup car on fresher tires, so-called going against Doug Kobe. That was a cool storyline in the end of things. And to see the guy that they really want to, you know, showcase in this superstar experience for each weekend, the, the, the highlight guy, the local track guy win that's huge for them against these big, big NASCAR cup series champions, former legends and everything like that. That is uh, awesome to see. So looking forward to, to this weekend here at uh at knoxville gonna be a, a lot of fun we have um we have bloomquist in there this weekend in the double zero and then yes. Haley deegan makes her srx debut this weekend as well in the number one so uh really cool to see these guys getting a shot here i'm curious to see how Haley deegan does against these guys this weekend um it's going to be a true test for her and then brian brown is in the legends uh, of the actual weekend race he's in the uh the kind of uh what is it camel pattern uh with the blue and the and the and the red and the yeah, white that the, the, the local ran. legend yeah so they've got some cool stuff going on they're practicing this week trying to get the cars and everything acclimated to the track and make sure everything's good to go for the weekend so uh really excited for that this weekend for srx busy busy motorsports weekend any car formula one nascar srx and a whole bunch of other things so uh lots of cool storylines to get around but um do you have anything else to add in the news and notes kyle and then uh i think we'll move into fantasy oh no i think that uh, just about covers it all righty it is time for the fantasy preview for nashville super speedway um really looking forward to this one kyle once again won at sonoma two weeks ago by one point um it's been a rough rough go for myself over the past i think six weeks now um it is something like that now right <laughs> it's uh it, it's yeah. um it's been pretty rough and i don't know what to think going into this weekend and of course we record this on the friday and nascar scheduling has the practice sessions for the cup series on the Saturday. So even with practice and qualifying, we do not get the advantage <laughs> to know who's going to be quick this weekend. But we can ha go a little bit off of the 750 horsepower package results so far this season to try and help us with our lineups because that's really where it's going to be. And, uh, and of course, the momentum maybe coming from race weekend to race weekend can be a bit uh, of a, a factor into your, your fantasy lineup. But 750 horsepower package results are going to be a really good baseline in figuring out who's going to be in our lineups. But um, you lead us off, Kyle. You start us off with the first pick this weekend. We've got the Truck Series, Xfinity Cup Series, and Cup Series poll winner uh, picks to make a little bit later on. But you start us off with the first pick in your lineup. Yes, and this is a unique one because, of course, we don't have any prior races to kind of pull from in terms of any stats at the track nope. or anything like that. You're looking 10 years back and that to lower series races as well for that. So toss all that to the side. None of it really matters. We're talking about this weekend kind of going in blind um, and trying to pull from maybe some data from this season to kind of pull from your lineup. Um, and because of that, um, I could completely miss on all of these and have a tough weekend, or I could miraculously hit on all of them and have a great weekend. I really have no clue how this one is going to play out. Um, but Nashville super speedway concrete surface, it is the 750 horsepower package, even though it is that cookie cutter shape, it is slightly smaller. It's a mile and a third or thereabouts. Yeah. So uh, 750 horsepower package, um, looking like it's going to be a one groove track. It's going to be a, a low wear tire as well. So, um, not a lot of tire degradation overrun. So a few things to consider in that regard. Um, so really not sure how this race is going to play out, but I'll begin kind of going with a bit of a safe bet here. Um, and looking at the 750 horsepower package, he's been great even though he hasn't got a win yet. And that is Denny Hamlin starting it off for myself. Uh, 750 horsepower package has finished in the top 10 in every single race and is 
uh, got at least 45 points in every single race. And, and that includes Dover at 45 points previous to that Darlington 48, Richmond 55, Martinsville 52 and Phoenix 49. He leads the series in average points haul at the 750 horsepower races. So Denny Hamlin is, I'm going to lead things off. Um, doesn't have the win yet this season. Uh, the, the form hasn't been as great. In, in the last couple of weeks has lost some ground to Kyle Larson atop that uh, regular season championship battle. Um, but I feel like this could be a decent opportunity given their speed so far this season at the 750 horsepower races uh, to kind of get back uh, in that groove. So Denny Hamlin is going to lead things off for myself. Uh, how many uses do you have left on Denny Hamlin? Uh, let me double check real quick. I've got five left for Denny. Okay. I have four for Mr. Hamlin. Uh, currently but i am going to be using a denny hamlin usage this weekend i'm going to go down to three um i have denny hamlin in my lineup as well he has the most points out of anybody this season on the 750 horsepower package with an average of 49.8 points per race which is absolutely phenomenal uh think if you don't win any stages the winner gets only 40 points with a race (laughs) victory so the fact that he's up above that near the 50 is really really impressive for not even having a race victory in that so very very solid stage points for denny hamlin this season and uh i I think this could be a a solid bounce back week and you know like you said it's been a bit of a struggle in terms of having that consistent top five speed that we saw miraculously for the first about 11 races of the season the past five or six or so haven't quite been up to that same expectation or up to that same par as what Denny Hamlin started the season off which is understandable with a pace that he started this season off with was almost <laughs> uh, historic so uh very very uh looking forward to seeing what Hamlet could do this weekend um, and I don't know I don't know what to expect from the 11 car to be honest I think it's a solid top seven day is probably in the cards for the 11 car, but we'll see what happens with practice speeds and through qualifying on where the 11 cars pace really is. But um, I'm hopeful that the, uh, the 750 horsepower package results will end up translating to this weekend at Nashville. So he starts my lineup off as well. Going into my second pick, It's a guy who has had very, very good success on the 750 horsepower package as well this season, and that's Joey Logano. Um, I have a lot of faith in him this weekend. Uh, He could potentially win this race. I've got six usages left on Mr. Logano this weekend. He's got the third most points out of anybody with the 750 horsepower package, excluding the road course races, which even though we are excluding that for for my purposes here on on what I have written down, uh, he has done miraculous miraculously well on the road courses themselves as well. So uh, I think Logano has all the the makings of, of having a really good weekend here. He won an Xfinity series race as well back in the day when he was driving for Joe Gibbs racing in the number 20 car. So real flashback there. And uh, I think Joey Logano is going to be a force to be reckoned with this weekend. I would not be surprised if the 22 car is up in the mix in that top five consistently. And uh, I think, you know, when we saw for hopefully that momentum at the, uh, The all-star race last weekend can kind of translate into a good weekend here, even though they're entirely different packages. Momentum is a decent thing, and Logano could use a little bit of that right now. So I'd say he's going to be a good bet. That's why I have him as my second pick. He is also my second pick here. Uh, Joey Logano and that 22 team have put all their eggs in the 750 horsepower basket this season. On 550 horsepower tracks, they've averaged 21.6 points. On 750 horsepower tracks, that's 20 points higher at 41.2. So they've been very, very good on the 750 horsepower tracks not so good at 550 horsepower tracks. So Joey Logano going into this weekend should absolutely be the lead Penske car should absolutely be in that top five conversation all day at Dover. Didn't have the greatest day, just 36 points, but a top 10 finish there. Looking back a little bit more, you're looking at 50 points at Richmond 54 at Phoenix. So maybe taking a little bit uh, from those. Um, But uh, the start of the season was very, very strong for Logano on the 750 horsepower uh, package tracks. A little bit less so at Darlington and Dover. Still so, some solid results, though. Um, I'm expecting him to be definitely a win contender this weekend for Ford and for Penske. Um, and actually, I'm going back to the Penske stable for this next one. And that's Ryan Blaney for my next pick here. Um, he's been solid 
on the 750 horsepower tracks this season, uh, 46 points at Martinsville, even though he didn't finish in the top 10, uh, due to some circumstances at the end of that race there with a penalty, 43 points at Phoenix, just 33 at Dover and not inside the top 10. But when I'm looking at it here, um, I'm looking to kind of diversify a little bit and not just go all on the heavy hitters um, for this weekend, just because we don't know kind of who's going to be the big players this weekend. And so for Ryan Blaney, he's been solid on the 750 horsepower package tracks this season. I've still got seven usages for him here. Um, so kind of starting to get to that crunch time where I got to start playing some of these and Ryan Blaney feels like a solid bet this weekend for myself, given the usage situation, averaging 37.8 points on the 750 horsepower track. So not a bad bet whatsoever. Um, top 10 threat, absolutely top five threat, maybe a little bit less so, um, but I'm expecting a solid day for Ryan Blaney. Nonetheless, I have Ryan Blaney in my lineup as well. Okay. Um, six, six more points with the 750 horsepower pack package so far this season um, averaging 37.8 points as well like you said so uh, he's been very very solid he's a he's a good solid usage it's going to get you some really good points this weekend I have five usages left with Blaney so I'm on the fringe with him going down the stretch but when I look at the tracks coming up yeah, I'm like okay I can, prob I can probably yeah. really swing I can, I can swing using a usage here and going down to four if he does well through the first two stages, of course. So um, I'm anticipating a good weekend for Ryan Blaney. I think Logano should be the lead Penske guy, but I think Blaney will be in for a shout, could be a surprise, you know, top five guy. If there's a late restart or something like that, he could probably work his way up into that mix. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Ryan Blaney can do this weekend. It's been kind of slow the last couple of weeks here. Hasn't quite found the finishes uh, to really, you know, kind of back up that Atlanta win. It's been kind of back and forth for him over the last like month or so. So um, I'm hopeful that Blaney can try and get some solid finishes here, get some consistency going into the playoffs because that is approaching pretty rapidly. Um, <laughs> it's, it's coming close every, every day. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Blaney and, uh, and that team Penske team can do this weekend. So that's my third guy as well for my fourth selection. I'm going to the HMS stable um, and it's going to be Mr. Alex Bowman after his contract extension. He has both wins in 2021 on the 750 horsepower package coming at Dover and Richmond. Uh, he's been very, very good so far on this package. So I expect big things from Alex Bowman this weekend. He could potentially be the, the, the guy that gets a third win on the season here this weekend. If things go his way, I could definitely see the 48 car in victory lane after this one. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect because we don't have practice really, but uh, I think he, there's, there is the, the potential for him to be up there at the front. He kind of surprised everybody at Richmond and a little bit at Dover as well with his race victories, but he likes to do them in a little bit in the late fashion. He likes to come on late in his race victories. And uh, I could see potentially something like that happening here for Alex Bowman this weekend in Nashville. So uh, due to his 750 horsepower pack, his performance this season, and having six usages left on the 48 car, I feel in a very good shape to use him this weekend. I will say Richmond was surprising. Dover was not surprising because do not forget, Alex Bowman was in my fi fantasy lineup for Dover. So thank you very much right there. But Alex Bowman is also in my fantasy lineup here. So we're four for four to start here. Alex Bowman, oh um, I, you have to have a Hendrick car in there at some point. I didn't feel comfortable using any of the other three at this point. A little bit undecided on, on one of them, um, but I'm not super comfortable uh, using any of the other three given my usage situations for the rest of them. Alex Bowman, I've got, what, five left on him here. I don't, I'm not super worried about his usages the rest of the way here. Um, and it's kind of swinging a little bit. He's been either win the race or kind of not in the conversation on the 750 horsepower package races. 51 points in the win at Dover, 51 points in the win at Richmond, but then 21 points at Darlington, not in the top 10. Martinsville, 13 points, got involved in that wreck, and Phoenix, 24 points. So Martinsville, he was more in the conversation and got caught up in some stuff, but it's been very much up and down so far this season for Bowman at the 750 horsepower package tracks. Hendrick's been on a roll, so I got to play one of them in the lineup. I have the most us uh, usages left for Bowman here, so I'm going to use him. The one thing I will say is at Dover, he was very strong, all of Hendrick was. 
uh, and that is the concrete surface. So maybe if you want to pull that tie, you can, even though there's really not a lot to take between the two tracks, but there's not a lot of concrete we go to in NASCAR. It's basically Dover, uh, Bristol, and that's about it. Now we're adding Nashville into that. So not a lot to take from it, but uh, Alex Bowman uh, going to be in my lineup to get that Hendrick contingency in the lineup. We'll see if I add another one in these next two picks, or at least for my last pick, but remains to be seen on that one. My fifth pick though, is one that I have to make. I have to do it. And it's 50% because of how good they've been this season, which is good, but not amazing uh, given kind of the expectation level for them and 50% because of the paint scheme, it's Kevin Harvick. He's got to be in the lineup for the grave digger paint scheme for starters. <laughs> Absolutely love that. That is going to be in my livery paint scheme of the year. A hundred percent. When we come uh, time to the end of the season to do our uh, full motorsports awards, but for Kevin Harvick, he's actually been pretty okay uh, on the 750 horsepower package tracks this season, 40 points at Phoenix, 37 at Darlington, 42 at Dover is the really big one that I'm looking at. Um, they've been getting more and more competitive week in, week out. That Gravedigger paint scheme is fantastic. You've got practice. You've got qualifying. I feel pretty solid about Kevin Harvick this weekend, so he's going to be my fifth entry to the lineup here. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I love the pick. And I've got Uh, six usages left for Harvick here. Okay. I'm undecided on Kevin Harvick um, right now. Um, well, you've got back to back to finish it off here, so you you're gonna have, I have to, figure to kind it of out figure quick. it out pretty quick, yeah. eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, here we go. The the weekly yeah. stall. Um, <laughs> gosh darn it! Do you it, at I, least have number five picked out? Yes, and I will go okay. into that right now. And you know, you saying that the Hendrick Motorsports staple, you're not really looking at the other three. That gave me a little bit of a, a pep up in my step, a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, because I am using a uh, massive usage here this weekend. And this is purely just to try and win me a week here because I I, I just need a race. I just need a a week win here just to get the confidence up a little bit, just to try and get that momentum back a little bit. And I'm going with the defending cup series champion, Chase Elliott in my lineup this weekend. Uh, I got five usages left with him. And when I look at the calendar, I'm not very comfortable with that because I think he's going to be very good at a couple of other tracks. But when I look at my situation with Larson, being with three usages and Byron with four. I wish I had maybe one more usage on Byron that I would have let him loose this weekend, but I just couldn't quite pull the trigger on him with four. But I think Chase Elliott with five, I can maybe swing it. And if I don't feel comfortable with it after the first couple of stages, I'll put him in the garage if things are able to work out that way. So I don't waste the usage on him, but I'd rather have him in there than not have him in there. He's been pretty decent at Dover, which is another concrete concrete surface. So I'm trying to draw a little bit to that. He's been decent on the the 750 horsepower packages this season, 37.5 points per race. So has been a bit more solid on the 550, but I I think that there's some, uh, some room for improvement there for Chase at the 750 and I'll give him the bit of a bump here because we haven't really had a 750 track with practice and I think with having that practice this weekend to get the car dialed in a little bit I think Chase Elliott and Alan Gustafson can figure out a package here for set themselves up good for race day and uh, I'm hopeful that that's the case for me this weekend so just try I'm not I don't consider this a burning and chase LA usage. I hope he can do a very good job and get me a top five at the very least because that's what you expect from when you use a chase Elliott usage in the regular season but We'll see what happens with him in this one. But uh, I don't know. I'm not overly confident with that pick, but I feel the need to just based off of my usage situation and my in my situation in fantasy being down so many weeks. Okay, swinging big on that one. Uh, you've still got another pick to make, though, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I have my sixth and final one. I don't like my usage situation with anybody that I have left. I got to be completely honest here that I got that that I have that I'm looking at. And it's, you know, I'm at four for a lot of these guys and I, and I look at them, I'm like, yeah, I could use them here that weekend. But then again, I can only use six drivers per that weekend. So I've got to try and figure this out a little bit. And honestly, I think your pick of Kevin Harvick is probably where I'm going to go here because I have four usages left on the four car. When I look at the calendar coming up, I'm like, okay, Kevin Harvick, he's been decent so far this season. He's not been spectacular, not the Kevin Harvick standards that we've seen in previous seasons, but 
I think Michigan is a place where I'm definitely going to be playing him. That's a track where I don't really have a good feel of where to use for fantasy, but he's always kind of been very good there. And then when I look at the rest of the calendar, I'm like, yeah, I could probably use him at New Hampshire, maybe, uh, maybe a Pocono race if things go his way. But then that's that's kind of where it really stops for me in Atlanta, of course. Those probably those four uh, I, I can definitely look at potentially, but I feel like using one here is not going to burn me too bad. So I'll use Kevin Harvick as my last usage here um, and my last pick for fantasy this week. And I know it's very similar to your lineup. It puts you in a bit of a tricky spot here. Can't match me on Chase Elliott, which is very nice, but I don't know. I don't think I you was were going never to do going it. To. I don't think okay. you're ever going to do it in your thing. So uh, I'll take five of six and I'll take Chase Elliott going up against whoever you decide to put in your lineup, basically. So I'm going to go with the four. All right. So I don't love uh, the fact that you've left me basically having to match up against Chase Elliott here if we're not going to have the same lineup here. Um which I, has that happened this season? I don't think it has. It's all been unique, uh, at least. Uh, you put a rule in that we can't. Well, no, I, I I know. I'm saying, but we haven't had the top five that we ended up using the same either. It's all been somebody wins a week. It hasn't been any ties yet. No. Um, but uh, what I'll say is that originally I was going to put Christopher Bell in my lineup uh, as a, a good car somebody who actually did the tire test here at Nashville. So he has a couple extra laps going into things here has been better on the 750 horsepower package than the 550 horsepower package. Um, but given the fact that I have to go up against chase Elliott, if I'm going to win this weekend, um, I got to bust out the big guns a little bit. Um, and you're not going to like this one because I'm taking a little bit from your playbook. You got practice, you got qualifying, and he's running the Xfinity race, going for win number 100. Kyle Busch is going it. to be the I final love it. If I'm going to lose, entry. I'm going to lose to Kyle Busch. That means this it's going to be weekend. the final entry to my lineup. Um, I don't I love, love it. doing it. I don't love doing it because he's been so much better on the 550 horsepower package races this season. Um, but not a ton of those packages, uh, package races coming up the rest of the season. You've got a couple at Pocono, you've got Atlanta, and then you've got Michigan. That's the rest of them. So if I do use a Kyle Busch usage here, I'm not heartbroken by any means. Um, How and, many you got left? Um, let me double check. I think I've got four left, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I've got four left for Kyle Busch. Wow. Here. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Uh, I, I'm not as heartbroken about that as you seem to be um, just looking at how I was originally going to play it out. I wasn't going to use them at Nashville, but I'm also fine with the way that things play out here. Um, don't have to use him if I'm not feeling it based off of how things go. Um, if there's any early issues for anybody, of hmm. course that could play into things, but for Kyle Busch here, practice qualifying Xfinity race, that's going to be a lot of laps on a track that not many people have. I'm banking on, good starting position with those extra laps uh, from Xfinity practice, Xfinity qualifying in the Xfinity race, uh, playing into at least some early uh, games in terms of getting out front, maybe getting some big stage points and maybe the first or second stage. And then maybe being in the conversation for the win. I'm not certain how that will play out, but Kyle Busch, He's got laps on the track. He's going to have laps this weekend. Usually plays into his favor in terms of how he does. You look at Charlotte. They had practice in qualifying, even though it was a different package. Um, they were the only team, essentially, that could compete with the Hendrick cars. I'm hoping that maybe that plays into this weekend as well. So Kyle Busch is going to be the final entry to my lineup here to round it out. I mean, if I'm going to lose, like I said, I'm happy to lose to Kyle Busch this weekend. That will you, though? Had a good one. will you though? Yeah, because that means that he's had a good weekend and it's had okay, a better weekend than Chase if Elliott. If we fast forward to the end of Sunday's race and Kyle Busch is the reason why I've won, we will see how things are. That's all I'll say. Okay, fair enough. Um, if he's standing in victory lane at the end of it, I won't care in the slightest. But uh, for me, I, I I was never going to use Kyle Busch this weekend. Interesting. J just because I have four usages left on him, and I think there's six tracks that I feel like I would be very comfortable using him mm -hmm. with at the, for the rest of the regular season. Um, I, I like his driving style on a lot of these upcoming tracks, but um, I, I, uh, I just didn't feel like I could use him here at Nashville. Uh, this weekend, despite the practice and qualifying, like I've said, he's just 
a beast with that, trying to get the car dialed in. But um, I'll just say that I'm going to stay away from him for myself. But let's go to the honorable mentions where he does make an appearance. But for me, Kyle Larson is absolutely an honorable mention this weekend. Maybe he won't win the race, but I, just based on his form this season, you have to think of him as an honorable mention basically everywhere we go now. Um, but with three usages left for me, I have my three races kind of picked out where I want to use Kyle Larson for the rest of the season. So I'm going to wait for those opportunities. Then his Hendrick Motorsports teammate, William Byron, running the Truck Series race later tonight. Um, and I think he's going to be really solid this weekend. I think he could be a potential win candidate for me, but I just didn't like my use of situation with four. When I look at some other places where it's a little more slim pickings with, uh, with some usage situations or where there's more options to pick from drivers. Then Martin Truex Jr. Has been pretty decent with the 750 yeah. star package this season. Five usages left for me uh, with, with Truex, but I like him at some other places just a little bit more with the unknowns here of Nashville. Hasn't really raced here in the Xfinity Series either. He's not doing any double duty this weekend, so I'm going to say that I'm going to go against Martin Truex Jr., but if you have five usages, I would say play him e that, even that way as well. If you feel like Kyle, Bush, if you like Kyle has potentially going I would probably go against that logic for this weekend, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but I think if you have five usages, yeah, you could probably play him here this weekend if you're comfortable with it. Any more than five, you've you've uh, wasted some Kyle Busch usages probably and, and not put him in your lineup when it was probably a good time to put him in your lineup. But I think that this weekend is, is a bit of a 50-50 for me this weekend with Kyle Busch. Then we go Brad Keselowski. I was contemplating on putting him in, staying away from him or honorable mentions. I could see him being a stay away from, to be honest. I don't quite get the impression the two car could be too quick this weekend based off of his 750 horsepower package kind of results so far this season. So I have a tough time reading the two car. I just threw him in here just in case, cause he's a big name and uh, could potentially do something. And I don't want to look stupid and have him in stay away from any wins the fucking race. So um, <laughs> I, I uh, I've got RCR with uh, the duo of Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick. I think they could be really good this weekend. Tyler Reddick was very close for me to, be that fringe kind of guy, but based off of your lineups kind of thing. If you went Bell, if you had the first pick, I probably would have gone with Reddick. I think that's probably a good um, one, one A, one B situation if we were to have gone that way, but it didn't. But uh, I think Reddick could be a sneaky play this weekend, a good value usage. And I'll toss in Daniel Suarez in here as well. He's done very good at Dover with the uh, with this package on concrete tracks. Concrete track here, 750 horsepower package. I could see Daniel Suarez maybe doing something this weekend and getting a top 13, top 12 maybe. If things go his way, getting some practice underneath his belt as well would do well for the team like Trackhouse. But uh, yeah, I think those are all really good, solid uh, additions there. Austin Dillon, I forgot to mention him. I really touch on him. He won an, uh, a truck series race, I believe, here the last time yep. we were here. So um, has had some success here, won, in, uh, won a race here. So uh, maybe he can surprise some things despite being a little bit poor on the 750 package tracks compared to the 551s so far this season. But those are the honorable mentions. My stay away from for this weekend, Matt Benedetto has been on a really rough go of things after two consecutive top five finishes about five or six weeks ago. Hasn't finished inside the top 15 since then. Kurt Busch just hasn't quite had the consistency so far this season for me to say that he's a good value play. I used him quite a bit last season for value, but there's not much value with that one car right now until they get that ship righted over there. And then finally, it's a guy that you were looking at for your lineup. I'm a bit hesitant on Christopher Bell this weekend. Um, I think they just haven't quite found that form so far this season. Um, and I don't, I know the 750 horsepower package results have been decent. He did well at Richmond there. Um, and he was decent at Phoenix earlier on this season. But apart from that, I don't know if I see the 20 car quite up to, to par. I think that first, uh, the second race victory or the first second race of the season resulting in a victory for them was huge for that team looking at where they have kind of finished since then. So um, I'm expecting him to try and turn it around over here over the last couple of months here before the playoffs start, hopefully. I don't know if this is the weekend where that starts, but we'll see if, if it comes around to that. I'm just a bit hesitant on the 20 car. Adam Stevens is better with practice. It seems with setting up a car. So maybe that'll do him a little bit better this weekend with practice, but that's my uh, stay away from for this weekend and the honorable mentions. Let's get into the bonus picks. Kyle, who leads us off for this one? Is, is it you or for me? I do. Okay. Uh, because I, uh, I had the last pick there of Kyle Bush. So uh, I lead things off okay. for this one. Um, 
this is the one that I had the most trouble with, uh, this first pick here for Chevrolet. Because um, the other ones I, I feel pretty safe about. Um, but for Chevrolet, uh, 750 horsepower package hasn't been that same bread and butter for Hendrick as the 550 horsepower package has been. It's been much more kind of up in the air who the top uh, Hendrick car has been at these tracks. You look at William Byron, he's finished inside the top 10 in every single 750 horsepower package race so far this season, but he also hasn't necessarily been the top finisher of those. You look Chase Elliott, of course, is in the, uh, is in the conversation. Kyle Larson was just dominant at another concrete track in Dover. Alex Bowman just won on a concrete track in Dover. Um, so I think I'm going to cover my bases just a little bit because you've got Chase Elliott in the lineup and I don't feel great about anyone in particular at Hendrick. I think I'll play Chase Elliott as my uh, top Chevy, um, try and recoup some points. Maybe if he does have a really strong day, but I don't feel very strongly about any of the Hendrick cars or any Chevrolet in particular. Um, so I'll go Chase Elliott, um, and see how things play out for the Hendrick camp me it was uh pretty simple to be honest uh i'm covering my basis and that's kyle larson for the top chevrolet just in case he is the guy that is the lead hendrick guy again this weekend and you know i don't have any reason to think that's not going to be the case because of how strong he's been won the all-star race won the coca-cola 600 i mean the guy is just on firing form right now one at sonoma i mean he's just on another level right now uh with with his consistency and his pace so um For me, I mean, I have Chase Elliott in my lineup, but the fact that I don't have Kyle Larson in my lineup scares me a little bit. So I'm going to put him in as the top Chevrolet to get some points there if he is the lead Hendrick guy over there on Sunday. Top four, this was very simple for me, to be honest. Um, And it's Joey Logano. Um, Even though we've had a very love-hate relationship so far with this category this season. Every time I don't pick him, he is the no, top four. No, you board. have. You no, have. No, I have. Th- no, that's what I'm saying. I have had, <laughs> like, a, like me and him have had a really love-hate relationship. <laughs> Not you. You've had a great relationship with Joey Logano this season. Every time I don't pick him, you do. And then he ends up getting you five extra points. But uh, this weekend, I'm making sure I get him here. And if he has a bad day, that's really unfortunate because I have him in my lineup too, but I'm going to say that, that, you know, maybe the curse is broken I'll hopefully for one weekend here and I'll, uh, it's pretty simple for me. Joey Logano is the favorite to win this category for me. Kevin Harvick could be an outside mention maybe and Ryan Blaney, but though, but Logano is definitely the front runner. Yeah. I, I wanted to kind of go against you for, for this pick. Um, I was hoping you'd you maybe do. go elsewhere. Um, but I'm, I have to go Joey Logano for this one. Oh, um, man. he's just been too good on the 750 horsepower package tracks. I thought about going Harvick. Um, but I, I just don't think it's worth the gamble for five points, uh, in the swing that would be just given the odds of Logano being that top finisher. So Joey Logano as well will be my top four. And, Alrighty. uh, Now we go to top Toyota. Um, And this one I feel pretty safe about as well. I'm just going to go nice and easy. The fastest 750 horsepower package car this season has been Denny Hamlin. So I'll just have him as the top Toyota. It could easily be Martin Truex Jr. It could easily be Kyle Busch. Um, But uh, I'm just going to go overall. The fastest guy this season has been Denny Hamlin. Surely at some point it's got to pay off. I don't know if there's one specific favorite either this weekend to win the race either. Like it's kind of been the last couple of weeks. So Denny Hamlin will be my top Toyota and we'll see how things play out from there. Just like you're doing with Chase Elliott to cover your basis with my lineup. I'm covering my basis this year. Kyle Busch is my top (laughs) Toyota finisher. Um, And I do like the practice element to him. I just don't feel like a full usage for him is quite worth my time when I look at some other tracks coming up, but I think he's going to have a pretty solid day at Nashville. It's a track he's had success at in the past. Um, won an Xfinity series race here way back when um, in those NOS colors. So I think he's going to be a, a, a really good shout. And of course, the last time he was here and won a race in the, uh, the Xfinity series or then the nationwide series, he did the, infamous smashing of the guitar in victory lane what a story that would be if he replicated that on sunday uh, or saturday um i'm not even going to get into that because i can tell you're already mad about that but i'm not i am i I, uh, I i i thought it was pretty cool but um yeah and you're a loser 
Thanks. Thanks for that, Kyle. Appreciate it. But uh, if you, disrespect, you, if, I can't believe you still he, that. Was, Anyways. That, that was a backup guitar. It was not the real trophy. I they had a second one. Less. I, that's, you got to do it. And um, No, you don't. I, I, you very yeah. much do not have to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. So, uh, yeah, winning manufacturer. <sighs> I thought you were going to roll right into it, and then you just – the sigh, pause, and I know the stalling's already coming. Chevrolet. I'll just punch it Ooh, in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll go Chevrolet. They're just so good right now, honestly. Like I, it's it's I, I don't know if I've ever seen like a four car organization like this be this dominant in quite some time. Really, like they are leading a stupid number amount of laps like it is unbelievably what hendrick motorsports is doing right now and i know chevrolet is not just hendrick motorsports specifically but it is hendrick motorsports leading the chevrolet side of things so all four of them could easily win this weekend in my mind just based off of how good they've been it, it may not even be like their strength of the 750 horsepower package but it's just been the consistency that that entire organization has shown I'm going to go with Chevrolet. I don't quite see a favorite from the Toyota or Ford camp that I could really rely on to get me the, the, the winning manufacturer. I think Logano is going to be very, very good this weekend. Toyota, there's three guys over there that you could throw their names into a basket and pick one and you feel comfortable with them being maybe the winner because that's just how it's gone this season. But for me, Chevrolet, they've got four cars there that could win this weekend and that's just going to, what's going to give me the edge for them. Yeah, this is this is one that I've really struggled with here because um, usually the strategy I like to go with is kind of go all in on kind of one team, one organization or one manufacturer uh, and look to get the maximum 30 points if I hit rather than trying to diversify and trying to guarantee 15. Um, that said, um, I, I just don't feel particularly any way about one specific team or one specific driver this weekend. So I am actually going to look to diversify it this weekend as much as I wanted <laughs> to try and find somebody to go all in on. I just couldn't do it. Um, and so for that, uh, I'm going to match you for Chevrolet for the manufacturer, even though um, I'm, I just really don't know how this weekend's going to play out. Um, but for organization, I'm going to go Joe Gibbs. I feel pretty safe about the organization pick there for Joe Gibbs. Um, I feel really solid about Hamlin speed. I feel really solid about Kyle Busch having the entire weekend. Um, Truex, if they decide to show up this weekend, uh, is going to be one of the win contenders, just given how fast they've been on the 750 horsepower package. Although they've kind of only really put all their eggs in the baskets of those playoff tracks. And of course, Nashville is not one of those. So I could easily see a Truex no show, which is of course why I didn't have him in my lineup or have him as my top Toyota. But um, looking over the organization there, I feel pretty solid about Joe Gibbs. If you want to go to that Hendrick camp, I, I mean, you, you can look at all four as potential race winners. So I don't love leaving that possibility up to you to kind of get the full maximum 30 if it is. A Hendrick winner. Um, I also thought about playing the Ford manufacturer as well, given Kevin Harvick, given Joey Logano. Um, but I decided at the end of things to kind of go with the split of just cover the Hendrick bases just because of how good they've been, but also see if maybe I can catch a Joe Gibbs uh, kind of solid day. So uh, that's going to be the split for myself here. I, uh, I'm i going all in. Um, I'm going with Hendrick really? Sports. Wow. Yeah. Um, a little surprised by that. Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, <laughs> I I, th I do think a Gibbs car is, is is in a good shout to win this weekend. You know, Hendrick's dominance is it can only last for so long. But until it does end, I'm not going to be the one that's going to be looking stupid and with my pants down. Uh, I'm going to put him in there just in case that they do have a really solid weekend here. I mean, their their four cars have basically been in the top five the last like three weeks. Like it, it's been stupid consistent for, from Hendrick and you know just for that reason I don't know if they're going to have that big of a drop off even if they have two guys in that top five they could be one and two at the end of the day so yeah. I, I mean it's 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 really tough for me to say that Hendrick Motorsports is not going to win this weekend Logano 
and the three JGR cars are probably their best competition this weekend in my eyes, but you never know. You never know if somebody could maybe surprise us this weekend being an unknown track for a lot of these guys never raced here or haven't raced here in over a decade, basically. So um, could be a bit of an unpredictable weekend here, but I'm going to go with the predictable pick with <laughs> Hendrick Motorsports. So that'll do it for the winning organization. Do I, uh, we go into the winner picks now. We go yes, into and the winner picks. Just before we get to the winner picks, because uh, we begin with the truck series, of course, and truck series qualifying actually just wrapped up. I want to give a big shout out for starters to Derek Krause for getting his first ever pull in the, in the truck series there with a 29.83 tenths up on the, on the rest of the field. A fantastic lap from Krause there really needs a solid weekend, just given how unlucky he's been this season. And not only that, Jack Wood in the 24 track for GMS racing will be on the outside as well. Um, a fantastic lap from himself leading the way for GMS there. Um, he's been okay in Arca so far this season. Hasn't been as dominant as like a Sam Mayer or anything like that, as is unreasonable to expect of anybody because Sam Mayer is generational, uh, but a nice lap there from Jack Wood. So interested to see how this truck series race plays out. You've got a lot of really, really fun people in the field. You've got Grant Enfinger in the 98, but you've got some, uh, you've got some ringers in here. You've got Ryan Priest. Uh, making a start in the 17 Ford as well for DGR. So um, going uh, against the manufacturer in the cup series there for him, you've got William Byron in that second uh, Rackley truck, the number 27, you got Josh Berry in the number 25 Rackley uh, truck. You've got Ty Majeski in a fifth Thor sport truck. So you've got a lot of really fun stuff this weekend. You've got Parker Kligerman back with Henderson. So you got a lot of really fun stuff. Ross Chastain, I forgot about as well for Nice. So going to be a, a pretty stacked field for the truck series, to be honest, this weekend. And uh, lots of different options for you to go ahead and uh, pick between here. Yeah. Um, I I'm glad that we just got qualifying done. So it just gives me a bit of a better <laughs> idea of, of what's going to happen here. Um, I'm going to go with the guy that led the practice session. It's going to start fifth tonight. And I'm going to go with Chandler Smith to get his first truck Ooh, series victory. Um, okay. I, think, I, I think we see a first time winner here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Chandler Smith is the uh, the pick for myself here. He looks he looks much more comfortable than his, his uh, teammates in jo Drew Dollar and John Hunter Nemechek. Nemechek's been kind of off the pace in practice and in qualifying here on one lap speed. So this may be the, the opportunity for somebody other than Nemechek to go to victory lane this season. And I think it stays within the KBM camp for the uh, the Truck Series uh, winner. And the trophy goes back to uh, KBM. I initially thought William Byron, but I don't know if Rackley is going to quite have the piece for him to compete there if it comes down to a late pit stop or something like that. He does have his Cup Series uh, crew pitting for for him it's gonna i'm curious to see what happens with byron that's the guy i'm going to be really watching tonight on his return to the truck series did so well for kyle bush motorsports in his one season there then moved up to the xfinity series obviously should have won the truck series championship in his one season but it's qualifying p10 there in a decent position here moving forward i'm curious to see what he does tonight for rackley but i'm going to go with a bit of more of a safer bet if you want to call it that with a, a guy that's going to be running full-time and has a little bit more uh you know track time with this truck i'm gonna say that chandler smith gets it done tonight yeah of the one-off guys I, I think the one that's got the best shot to win honestly is probably ryan priest just given the equipment he's in dgr has pretty solid equipment um we, we've seen them kind of be up in the top 10 conversation more so with the 17 truck and kind of the rotation they've had than the the full-time drivers which you would expect for tanner gray who's only raced on ovals for what two or three seasons now uh coming over from pro stock nhra and Haley deegan being a rookie in the series so nothing you wouldn't expect between the two inexperienced drivers um, but ryan priest solid qualifying time uh, we've seen him in the past for Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series be able to come into a one-off weekend for a top team and be able to compete right away. Um, I'm just not sure if Nashville is maybe the track type to really suit his style. Um, so I'm not going to go the Priest route. Again, I agree with you with the, the Rackley comments. I just, uh, maybe if we'd seen more from them this season, maybe, but mm -hmm. um, just, I think it's a little bit too much to ask of like a William Byron or even a Josh Berry to go out and, and win in that equipment right away. Um, yeah. So I am going to go to a series regular 
even though he isn't playoff eligible, I'm going to say Grant Enfinger gets the win in the 98 this weekend. Uh, was really solid at Richmond, um, was okay at Darlington, um, but I, I, I'm going to go uh, Grant Enfinger for this one. He's been really solid this season, swapping back and forth between that nine truck for CR7 Motorsports and the 98 Thor Sport. Of course, he missed the second race of the season, so he's not playoff eligible, which is a bit of a shame because he's been really solid this season when he has been in that 98 truck. So uh, I'll say Grant and finger goes out and kind of gets a win and uh kind of puts his name out there in terms of a guy that's looking for a full-time ride into next season as we kind of get some of the silly season stuff situated our, our picks are starting fourth and fifth so it seems like a pretty good area for a potential win here tonight but uh xfinity <laughs> go for it <laughs> xfinity i cannot um, believe you get the chance to do this <laughs> look i wanted to go and i, and can, I cannot believe it it's I so wanted to give it's it so to you. frustrating it's so frustrating i have a big speech prepared Daniel Hemrick takes the win from Kyle Busch. Oh, you're so kind. Just the, oh, oh. Just the most heartbreaking fashion pot. If I'm going to give you the winner pick, I'm going to do it in the way that I want it to happen. Kyle Busch loses his 100th of win in the Xfinity series to Daniel Hemrick. So uh, if it's going to happen, I want to oh. Sorry, I think I hit my mute button there. But uh, <laughs> uh, if it's going to happen, I want it to happen in fashion. So Daniel Hemrick beats Kyle Busch to the line and that's, wins at Nashville. That's my worst nightmare, if that were to happen. I'm you, glad. I am so glad. You you would be ecstatic. I would not hear the end of it in terms of text shows. Dude, I shows. would be so happy. You don't even know. No, I know. I know. But – Thank you very much. You are very kind, Kyle. Um, I, I really, if really this was hope for points. If it was for points, I wouldn't have done it. But because yeah. it's not, I'll let you have it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the moment a lot of you have been waiting for. To be honest, for many, many years here, you've been asking for him to leave the Xfinity series. He's basically Do you think he's set, actually going to leave though. Um, he there's, there's he's kind of have sponsors set up for next season. They've kind of purchased some stuff. So I don't think it's the end for him after this year. I don't know if he'll do the maximum five, but at the end of the day, it is just five races. So he may just continue going, but you never know. But the elusive 100 victory is around the corner for Mr. Bush. He's won two races so far this season and his two starts in the Xfinity series coming at Texas last weekend. And then of course, at the circuit of the Americas, He's running the M&M's paint scheme this weekend. I say that he gets it done. Kyle Busch wins his 100th Xfinity Series race. Hopefully there will be a very special graphic coming up on the Instagram page as well in commemoration of that. It was a lot of fun. I've gone through all the pictures of all of his victories in the Xfinity Series. You know, I know you're shaking your head, but like for me, like this is pretty cool. Like 100 victories is something that doesn't really happen much. And for somebody to hit this milestone, no matter if it is in the second division or not, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. I hope he gets it done. I hope this spiel isn't for nothing. Um, but I, I think it's inevitable. Hopefully it happens this weekend and then everybody can kind of put that to rest. It's been a long time coming because of the rules and everything like that being pushed down to five races per season for these cup guys. So um, it's really NASCAR's fault that he's still racing in this series, to be honest, it could have been done a a while ago and uh but at the end of the day kyle bush is my xfinity series winner pick here for the nashville race in the nascar xfinity series led practice today by over two tenths over his teammate harrison burton so seems like he has the speed in that car i'm looking forward to seeing what he can do 44 laps as well in practice so very very solid lap total for him getting that getting that track time for him for hopefully a successful successful cup series race and uh that's my spiel for for kyle bush hopefully he gets it done for the 100th Xfinity Series victory this weekend, I'm just, I'm just not gonna. No, I'm, I'm, no, I'm gonna I, let you I, have I, it. I'm gonna honestly, let you have it. Honestly, I really appreciate that because I, you know, like, I mean, I've been a fan of his since for so long, right? But like, this is a pretty cool thing. But, um, already, already, <laughs> cup series, right. cup series. This now here's the here's the real one. If you take the guy that I want to take for the winner pick, now I'm gonna be upset. Because this is the one that really matters. See, now, this is interesting because I don't have mine picked right now. But uh, because this entire episode with our picks and everything and, you know, you're going with the manufacturer route and your organization route, you haven't been crazy about Hendrick Motorsports, which is like 
really awkward to me because you're usually the one that's really high on Hendrick Motorsports and I'm kind of a little bit more hesitant, but this weekend it's kind Unless of rules reversed. Awesome here. I, honestly, you could be, be being like the best poker player I've ever seen. Big bluff here. Um, but I do think you want somebody else, but I don't, I don't want to let that distract me from what I want for, <laughs> for, for, for this one. You sure about that? Yeah, I, I, I do feel that way. Okay. Um, I really, th- <laughs> I, I, I do think, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go with him this weekend. I say that he finally breaks through this season. I think I'm going to cover my bases. I can't go all in on Hendrick Motorsports. I have them there for the Chevrolet and the organization, but I'm really limiting myself with the unknowns coming into this weekend if I go with the Hendrick Motorsports driver. So I'm not going to go with the Hendrick driver as much as I would love to, and I'm leaving you Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott or William Byron or Alex Bowman. I'm going to go to the Joe Gibbs Racing Camp, and I'm going to go with Denny Hamlin. I say that he gets his first. Oh, my God. I can't believe you did it. I'm going to say that he gets his first victory of the season. Um, I think it's it's kind of – it feels like it's rearing to a head here for Denny Hamlin. It, it, it's finally time. I think the NBC kind of switched the calendar uh, over to the broadcasting deal. It's like a new – it's a clean slate kind of thing with the, with the drivers. And after the all-star break here, it gives them a time to reassess and everything. I think that it was good for the 11 car after having a bit of a slow period going into that all-star break. I think it's good for them to try and get that going giving him some practice as well. I could see something happening here with the 11 car. I was very close to picking Joey Logano, but I'll go with Denny Hamlin here for the cup series winner pick. Uh, I don't feel like super strongly about Denny Hamlin this weekend to win or anything like that. So don't take my reaction as like me thinking like he's a no, clear cut no, winner I, or anything I, I like that. I don't think that there is I'm a not, clear I'm favorite this weekend, right? Maybe you just more like general audience or something like that. Uh-huh. But um I wanted him because he's just simply put been the fastest guy on the 750 horsepower package tracks. The speed's been there. The, the results have been there at some point is going to come to fruition. Um, it hasn't so far this season it, at a track that there isn't necessarily a favorite because we don't have enough data to pull from. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a really solid bet that you're making there. Um, so that's the one I wanted. So now I have to pivot and look elsewhere um, and even Pivot. though I don't think, Pivot. even though I Pivot. don't think that he's maybe the, the race winner contender, I'm going to take it so that if he has this kind of day, um, I still salvage some really solid points. And that's Chase Elliott as my winner pick here. Um, I, doing it solely from a strategy play. Um, I don't think he's going to win the race, but if he does, you're getting a hell of a lot of points. And if he wins now, I get 15 of those back. So kind of playing a strategy call there because I wanted Denny Hamlin audible. didn't end up getting him a bit of a bit of an audible there, Omaha, but uh, Chase Elliott is going to be the race winner pick for myself here. Interesting. I was, I'm a little bit surprised you went with, 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 uh, with Chase over the Hendrick cars. Cause for me, I think William Byron is a sneaky winner pick here this weekend. I don't know about you. I yep. think the, the 24 car could be something pretty damn sporty this weekend, but um, it is looking, looking solely forward to a it. strategy play. Cause if but, Chase Elliott has that day, you win playing him as my race winner. If he has that day, then I'm very much more in the conversation. And if not, winning because of that winner pick so it's very much a strategy play on my part less than a kind of playing the odds of the winner i've got more to lose with using chase elliott than you do this weekend this is you know a winner pick is is obviously important but for me using a a potential usage with chase elliott is going to be more pivotal in our season long thing so i I like your strategy from that point of view but we do have one more pick here because there is qualifying this weekend cup series poll who is going to be starting uh, in that first selection, and who's going to get the number one pick, pit stall for this race on Sunday? You lead us off with this one, Kyle. Who do you think? Um, again, I think this one's wide open. You you can look to, to the Hendrick guys because they've been great qualifiers in the past. Again, I'm just going to go with it just so you can't take it this time. I'm going to say Kyle Busch gets the pole award here at Nashville. He's wow. got uh, the track time this weekend. We, we don't know going into things, but just seeing how much quicker he was than the rest of the field uh, in that Xfinity practice session, maybe reading into that a little bit too much. Um, I think Joe Gibbs is going to be solid this weekend. So I'll take Kyle Busch as the pole award winner. 
I will say he is running the pedigree paint scheme this weekend, and it's been his probably his worst luck Uh-oh. paint scheme Uh-oh. in history. I didn't know that, so now yeah. I'm screwed. But so um, that's uh, that's why I was a bit hesitant in the first place. You know, if he, <laughs> if he's running the M and M's or Skittles or something, then yeah. What's he uh, What's he running for Xfinity then? M and M's. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's GGs. Yeah, yeah, it's GGs for the field, really. Uh, yeah. But for my Cup Series pull pick, I'm going to go with the guy that really is good on one lap pace, and that's William Byron. I I do think that he's yeah. going to be somebody sneaky this weekend, getting that little bit of track time, like you said, in the Truck Series though, under night conditions. So it's going to be a little bit of, of a, a switch for him to turn it on for Sunday qualifying because it is on Sunday morning of the race, the qualifying for the Cup Series this weekend as well. So um, I'm curious to see what he does this weekend. He's one of the guys that. I, I feel really confident about. I just didn't have the usages for him this mm-hmm. weekend. Um, but he's a guy that could get, go out there and get one lap's pace out of his car. And um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's starting on pole or any of his other Hendrick teammates. I think Bowman could be a decent shout for pole as well. But um, I'm going to go with Byron for the last category of today's episode. It's been a long one. It's been an action-packed one. Lots of different things to talk about. So thank you very much for everybody that stuck through us throughout this entire thing and you've enjoyed the fantasy part of it as well. But any final thoughts before we wrap up the NASCAR episode here, Kyle? Yeah, uh, lots of news this week. So uh, a good sign going into this kind of summer stretch here as we get into the thick of things, the middle of the season, getting more and more of that silly season news because we all love the racing and everything, but we also really, really love the silly season stuff. It's so much fun to see how things play out, where people go, what opportunities arise, what surprises we get. Even just this week, the GMS stuff was very surprising. Calling, getting two charters was something that I don't think a lot of people expected and them coming from Spire as well. So a lot of different stuff to watch going into these next few weeks in terms of silly season. A new track debuting this weekend is also really fun. Um, And and even looking back to the IndyCar stuff as well, you got a couple of fun names and new places at a track that really delivered last year as well. So uh, a lot of fun stuff coming up this weekend. Should we go through the fantasy lineup one more time here, Kyle, yeah, just sure. for the viewers to wrap up today's episode. I'll lead us off for this one because I am the loser coming into this one. Um, <laughs> so for my lineup, I've gone with Joy Logano, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, and Kevin Harvick. For the bonus picks for the top Chevrolet, I've gone with Kyle Larson, top Ford, Joey Logano, top Toyota, Kyle Busch, winning manufacturer Chevrolet, Hendrick Motorsports as the winning organization. And then for the truck series, which will already basically have happened by the time you're watching this, but nonetheless, it's for fun anyways. Chandler Smith for the truck series. The Xfinity series, Kyle was gracious enough, gracious enough to give me the Kyle Busch pick here. So I appreciate that one more time. So he's going to be my pick to get his 100th victory there. Then the cup series race, on Sunday on NBCSN to start off their broadcasting thing. I'm going to go with Denny Hamlin. And for the Cup Series poll on Sunday morning, I'm going to go with William Byron. For myself, also got Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, and Kevin Harvick. The only difference, though, taking the swing, even with the pedigree scheme, still taking the swing on Kyle it's Bush. <laughs> it's a big risk. I really should have looked at the paint schemes, but uh, looking at the bonus picks, I'm going to go Chase Elliott as the top Chevrolet, Joey Logano for top four, Denny Hamlin as the top Toyota manufacturer. Going to split it this time. Usually I go all in on somebody, decided to split it on this kind of unknown weekend, going to a new place. Chevrolet manufacturer, Joe Gibbs organization, trucks, I'm going to say Grant Enfringer breaks through, Daniel Hemrick, breaks through and gets that steals that hundredth win from Kyle Bush. So we can't destroy another damn guitar for the cup series though, playing the strategy one stole the Denny Hamlin pick that I really wanted. So I'm going to go chase Elliott, play the strategy one on that one. And Kyle Bush gets the pole award on Sunday. All right. I love it. I think we've got a great weekend shaping up here with our yeah. picks. Very close this weekend. Not as much differences as we usually have. So it's going to be, it. it's going to be a stressful day. It's going to be nail biting action basically yeah. on with Sunday some, with some big usages on the line too. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be doing that from the seat of doing it for TSN uh, big yes. news on my front. So I uh, wanted to put that out there. I'm going to be running the NASCAR on TSN Twitter account, as well as doing some stuff for them for the Sunday race for the cup series. So really, really excited for that. Uh, it's been my dream. So uh, I, the fact that I'm able to do this for the cup series uh, for NASCAR on TSN, something I've watched for countless years is uh, pretty cool so looking forward to that opportunity so don't go anywhere on the green flag we're still got you covered here plenty of things coming on the channel over the f- next few months weeks days and, and everything just a it's- reminder on sunday whenever kyle bush does something stupid 
be sure to reply in mass to any of the TSN tweets. Appreciate it. Um, I will not be <laughs> tweeting out anything. If anything bad happens to Kyle Bush, I will not be putting anything out there because that biased, is you know, biased uh, journalism. It, 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 Nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows. But uh, <laughs> make sure to follow us on Instagram at the Green Flag Pod, as well as Twitter at the Green Flag Pod. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a like on this video if you enjoy it. We really, really appreciate it. The growth in the channel has been really great since our yeah. silly season uh, predictions video. So really appreciate all your guys' support, the comments, the likes. Make sure to comment as well. We'll be sure to reply on that front. So it's been a lot of fun. We've got a great weekend of racing coming up. But for this episode, I've been Lucas Wacker. He's been Kyle Cushman signing off for now. Enjoy the racing from Road America for IndyCar and as well as the triple header for NASCAR debuting once again at Nashville Super Speedway. Going to be a lot of fun. Enjoy the racing, everybody.